Welcome, Heroes of the Storm fans! Today is Monday, October 3rd, 2016, and we have another Cherly cast for you uh, from Division 1. Again, this is Cherry League Season 3. And we have a treat tonight because we have two 3-in-1 teams in Division 1 facing off against each other. Uh, one of these is a team I casted last week, 2 plus 2 equals team, who ended up winning on Battlefield of Eternity against Mighty, Cluck, Mighty Cucks. Uh, the other team, I Like Your Smile, I have not casted before. And... Uh... I don't know too much about them, actually. Just handing out the draft links. So the draft links are out to the captains, and we are just waiting for them to join. I know uh, I Like Your Smile needs to a couple of minutes, but... Okay, let's, let's check out what these teams are about while we're waiting. Um... Now, 2 plus 2 plus team equals team does have someone I, I've played with and actually casted with this weekend in the HOTS weekly Discord tourney, uh, G. So he's a great player, looking forward to seeing some of his plays, of course. And uh, I like your smile. Looks like they, they have, they're keeping like a pretty tight, small roster. Um, their central division team looks like central time. Uh, anyway, last season they finished seven and four, uh, rank thirty one in division two. So it looks like they got prom promoted to season one this season, or division one this season. So doing, doing, holding their own in season one though. I mean, uh, division one though. Well, I keep mixing those things up. Okay. <laughs> I think it's probably a creepy name. Uh, <laughs> looks like she's just updating his profile in Cheer League or something, but um, 2 plus 2 equals team is an interesting team because they it looks like they have a lot of players on their on their roster. <laughs> um, so not not really sure how often they, they keep those. Looks like they actually recently added one last month. He's an ND. I think he played for them last week. I can't remember though. So, still waiting for I Like Your Smile. Uh, one thing I will note is that I Like Your Smile has the portrait synergy going right now, which 2 plus 2 equals team does not. They need to step up their game in that department. Um, <clears throat> Still a couple of administrative issues. Uh... Anyway, I hope everyone's having a great Monday. Uh... We are one week, about one week, into the Zarya patch now. I don't know if any of you have played with her. Uh, just working out a few issues in case Top Drafter hasn't added Zarya yet. Um, I think she's probably in there now, but last week she wasn't, so we had to kind of work out what kind of picks would indicate Zarya. All right, looks like both captains are live, are already. <laughs> Working out these amend issues is always fun during Patrick. So, still just waiting for I Like Your Smile to join the draft. There we go, here we go. Oh, 
I should mention the map, it's Cursed Hollow. Once again, it's 2 plus 2 equals team's pick. I think they picked last week as well. And they picked Battlefield of Eternity last week. But this team against I Like Your Smile, they're picking Cursed Hollow. Maybe having done some research and realizing that they're not that strong on that map. Or anything like that. Uh, now, this is a big map. Mobility heroes are awesome. Falstad, Brightwing, even Zagara with Nidus Network, maybe. Or we see a lot of uh, Lost Vikings is very powerful on this map, and Abathur with a split soak. Uh, of course, with the reduced mount speed change, uh, split pushing is a lot more viable, and it is a few seconds difference if going from between top and bottom, so. Okay, so it looks like uh, I Like Your Smile is going to be banning Zarya, which is Nova, because Zarya is still not in Top Drafter yet. Um, <clears throat> quite slow in its updates. And then the Malfurion ban coming out. Now, Zarya and Malfurion have been the power picks, have been kind of the OP picks in this meta recently, so no surprise there. But that leaves open like everything else all the regular power picks on this map which i said like the mobility heroes and because of all the chokes um a lot of uh aoe combos can work jaina uh diablo even um Tyrael with his sanctification can protect a large area etc Li ming of course uh a lot of chokes very predictable means a predictable pathing, so you can hit them with uh, with all your burst. And it's a poke map. You can She can delay a channel forever on the tribute by herself, essentially. And you just have to keep dodging all her stuff. So in the poke war, Li Ming is kind of the most stable picks. She has so much range, and her spells are on such a short cooldown. So not a, not a surprising first pick from I Like Your Smile. Uh, in return, Chris, uh, the 2 plus 2 plus equals team picks Murden. Now, Murden is a very stable first pick. Uh, you don't give any away. He fits in any comp. He has gives you a lot of everything. He gives you a lot of sustainability, uh, frontline. He gives you, you know, auto attack reduction. He has a slow. He has a stun. He does everything. He can even spec into a lot of damage with giving him the axe later on. So... Just with that pick alone, you can't really tell what they're going for in 2 plus 2 equals team, not giving away any of their strategy. I was curious what their next pick is going to be, like I said. Uh, if they pick one of the mobility heroes like Brightwing, they can start choking out healers. So, nope, they choose to go to Vala. Vala is one of the most consistent uh, auto-attacking DPSers, kind of... Uh, well, what do we call consistent DPSers in the meta right now? Uh, she can deal out a lot of damage uh, over time and she doesn't have any burst really except with her multi-shot if she builds up a lot of hatred stacks but she's good at chasing she's good at getting away so she has a lot of mobility with strafe she can do a lot of spread damage as well so she's just been consistently seen as a very high pick right now now, her range isn't as good as Li Ming's though, and she has to watch it because if she eats one of Li Ming's combos, she will probably have to back off quite fast. Uh, uh, just a note, Chair League uses Top Drafter because I think they have an API that allows Chair League to send it information to set up drafts and stuff like that so that uh, I manage, like I get the draft links and start the draft from the chair league page. Uh, I'm not sure that Heroes Draft, which is usually the one I like using, uh, has that kind of functionality. So that's why Top Drafter is used, I believe. I mean, I haven't asked Super Jofa, but he seems quite insistent on using this, so. Um, <clears throat> so we have Tychus and Oriole as the response picks from I Like Your Smile. Oriole, of course, being one of the top healer, probably the top healer behind Malfurion right now in the meta. She provides a lot of sustain healing. Uh, since she doesn't use any mana, she relies on energy. Uh, picks like Lunara and even Li Ming can, can give her a lot of energy. So she can have her crown on Li Ming for when she has her cooldowns up, and then once the burst hits someone, she can switch off the crown to a more consistent DPSer like Tychus. 
And of course, she's good against divers because she not only can she lash them back, and there is a lot of terrain on Cursed Hollow in a very tight spot that she can stun people with her lash with, uh, but she can also protect her squishies with Aegis. So very good against divers. And uh, with the Tychus pick is interesting because, I mean, it is good against um, Muradin, of course, because Muradin has one of the highest HP pools with Avatar. Um, but he also got a buff to his ultimate Odin, which I wonder if we'll see here. Now, the laser is very good on this map because, like I said, lots of chokes, so people fighting in a tight space, so you can't really get away from the laser too easily. And you're fighting around a central point, which is the tribute. But Odin gives 25% resistant now, so very powerful ultimate uh, if for those for those fights. So, well, I'm interested to see what they pick. Now, Brightwing was banned out, not having to, wanting to deal with immobility and etc. The other power, another power pick I mentioned on this map because of all the chokes, you can usually get a multi-man mosh. Not to mention all his other CC. Uh, so those are the bans. Now, the first picks coming out of the second phase from 2 plus 2 are Rhaegar and Illidan. Xi, I know for a fact, is a very good Illidan player, so uh, very excited to see him on that. And Rhaegar is one of the best pairings with Illidan. Of course, with that long-range ancestral healing uh, can save him. Uh, Illidan can, can just avoid a lot of stuff by himself, and he gets to the point where if you don't kill, if you can't kill him, you will never kill him. He just reaches that breaking point into a fight where you can just snowball the fight all by himself. And of course, he is very good at sticking to Li Ming, who is a very otherwise very um, slippery target uh, with her with illusionist with uh, her teleport. So now I like this response from I like your smile, Sonya. Sonya does stuff that Illidan kind of does in that. Uh, she can do mercs, merc camps by herself and just kind of be off the map and giving your team value while being off the map doing the merc camps and capturing them quickly by herself. And she does them at high health. She stays at high health and then can just go uh, contribute to a team fight right after getting mercs. But she's also a great counter to Illidan because she does not rely on her Arlo attacks too much uh, to beat on an Illidan. She, most of her damage comes with from the shockwave. So... Once Illidan dives in on a target like Li Ming, uh, Sonya will just go in with her spear stun and start shockwaving him down, and that puts a lot of pressure on Illidan. And then Johanna is the other counter pick to Illidan, very common. The blind really messes up Illidan. Illidan, of course, relies on the auto attacks to reduce his ability cooldowns as well as lifesteal. So, you know, having that few seconds of blind forces him to disengage or forces him to blow his metamorphosis. Uh, to try and clear that. And finally, we have Sergeant Hammer. She is very popular on this map. Uh, of course, like I said, this map is a poke war at the tributes and around the tribute. So having someone with long range like Sar Sergeant Hammer, having her, um, I forget what her ult is called, called the little lava pool thing uh, at the tribute, make sure no one can make sure no one from the enemy team can channel it while it's down, and that has no downtime. So every time that that little lava pool expires, she can just put a new I think it's called lava strike actually. Uh, uh, she can put a new one down. So it's very hard it's well, it's impossible to get a tribute while she's alive and there and at the tribute. So it does force it's kind of interesting because it does force I Like Your Smile to engage on top of Hammer because you have to kind of deal with her and Vala, but you can, like, you can try to poke all day with Li Ming, I guess, but it's going to be very tough. I'm very interested to see how these tribute fights are going to break down because Illidan doesn't really quite want to go into Sonya, Johanna, and Tychus on top of that, and of course Li Ming's burst, but... I Like Your Smile doesn't really want to engage into 2 plus 2 equals team either, or else Illidan will be free to dive into their backline, so I'm very curious at how these teams play this. Like I said, both teams are 3-1 in their, in their division, Division 1, uh, so 
clearly both very good teams. They know what they're doing, and the drafts both look very solid. They both have counters to each other's heroes, so... And we are ready to start the game. So once again, this is Chair League Season 3, Division 1 cast. Between a match between I like your smile and 2 plus 2 equals team. <laughs> now we we don't get to see Zarya and we don't get to see Alarak, neither of the really new heroes, and this is not a new map. But it should be a good match. Uh, last week, the 2 plus 2 equals team match that I casted uh, was a back and forth affair that unfortunately ended with one of the teams having a disconnect, and that's kind of how it ended. But all right, here we go. On team, I like your smile. Supreme Force on Johanna. Uh, Defender on Oriel. Rio on Li Ming. Aman on Tychus, and Juice on Sonya. On 2 plus 2 equals team, we have Tracer Bullet on Vala, Xi on Illidan, as predicted, McNulty on Rhaegar, Axon on Hammer, and Jeeves on Muradin. So it doesn't look like we'll have the 5 on 5 clash mid. Now of course Illidan isn't one of the best early skirmishers at all. He needs a couple levels, a few talents to really get going. So I like this choice from 2 2 plus team. Just kind of try to get some pressure on the top wall here. Of course with Hammer they can sort of safely do this. And look at how Mur Muradin is positioned. Uh, I really like when tanks do this. They, they act as a scout. He has, of course, a disengage so he can get out himself, so the, the minute he spots someone coming, the rest of the team knows their, their time is limited. They can try to take down this tower, maybe, but they gotta get out of there. Very well done. So they got a free tower, they're a little bit ahead on XP, uh, and then they split off into their lanes. Down here we see a one-on-one -on -one between Illidan and Li Ming. Looks like Li Ming's playing pretty far back, pretty safe. Uh, doesn't want to engage in a trade, of course. Uh, with that lifesteal, that self-sustain that Illidan has, if you let him get on top of you and get some free healing, he can win the lane off that, so pretty smart choice by Li Ming, but Li Ming has a lot of range, but as you can see, with Illidan off the map, she can't really poke out. She still has to stay safe. At least she's soaking all the XP though, so this is no problem for her, yeah, or her team. Now we're going, looking at the top lane, which should be where all the action's at, we see that... McNulty actually had to tap the well already, and so they, but the tribute's not coming up for another minute or so, so he might be okay by the time he needs it. So Lightning Shield here doing a lot of work, but Muradin is forced to jump out and Rhaegar had to blow a heal. Now of course here's where Muradin's passive just heals him up, and doesn't have to worry. Rhaegar looks to be switching mid for a second to heal Vala, which is very well played. That's great teamwork, and that's that's a sign you see you see like a team that has worked together a bit before they know what to do. Vala now can switch out bottom, and then Illidan goes and takes the camps, and so does Sonya. And this was what I was saying before. Uh, both both these picks allow them to control the the mercs on the map kind of equally. So up here, there's there should be nothing going on in any of these lanes really. No no kills. You see Tyke is smartly backs before the tribute. He knows it's coming up soon. And there it is, it's gonna spawn top. So we're gonna zoom up a little bit here more. And Mirrodin's trying to put some damage on the Oriole, but it's not gonna be fruitful because like I said, Oriole doesn't use energy to heal, so Mirrodin just kinda traded out his mana for some free health. Now Hammer's getting pressured, uh, and on the bottom side, so it looks like everyone's here except Vala. Vala's arriving late, but that shouldn't be a problem as Meriden gets a thunderclap off to uh, to cancel the, the channel. It looks like Johanna's under a lot of pressure from this Illidan here, and very well played by the Illidan, just 
finding the isolated target. Of course, Illidan doesn't want to dive into four people. He just wants the one-on-one -on -one battles where he, he wins kind of every time, except against Sonya. Vala, oh, that's what I was saying before, was that if he takes the Lee Min combos, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. And there it is. So he's forced to tap early into this fight. But that separates everyone else, and Muradin's getting shredded by that Tychus minigun. Oh, no. Now it looks like they'll just have to give up this tribute. They are still slightly ahead in XP, but... Uh, oh, Hammer's still trying to contest this. I'm not sure about how wise this is. Oh, he does get slowed by the missiles. Dodges. Very well played dodging the missiles, and now he uses his Zed to get out of there. Good job not dying there by Hammer. Uh, it was a kind of risky position, and you can see, because they took the bottom camp uh, before the tribute spawned, uh, Illidan did, this camp actually did a lot of work. It got the wall, and that's why despite the, the death, they're actually still ahead in XP ever so slightly. And you see Illidan's going right back to the camps. Very smart. Very good of distribution of resources. You see Sonya is actually late getting to her camp, so... Now, deciding, depending on what they want to do with this camp, they can decide to put some pressure and force rotations from uh, from my Like Your Smell. Looks like the second tribute is also top. So it looks like the camps were actually finished off at the same time because Sonya had help from Li Ming. And, but Illidan once again found an isolated Johanna target to heal off of and just do some free damage. Oh, Johanna's stepping way far forward. She's already used her trait, so she needs to be very careful here. She can't re-engage until later. And you see how careful Ilden's playing. He's jumping in and then jumping back right away. He knows he doesn't have Metamorphosis yet. And they actually take down Johanna. So it looks like tanks are going down left and right. Yeah, and there's another warrior going down, Sonya. And, oh, they find, a tr they find a third kill. And this is what I was saying. It's the Illidan effect. Once a fight starts going well for you, he, he reaches a point where you just can't kill him at all. <laughs> and you need to identify that point quick and get out of there if you're the team facing the Illidan. And look at this, they go for boss right away, knowing Tychus is still down for a couple of seconds and it'll take him a while to even get there. <laughs> is... Uh, is I Like Your Smell making a move? It looks like they are. And now Meriden is kind of distracting them in mid there, but they're just going to ignore that. Oh, Johanna miss checks the checks the bush with her blind, but doesn't find anyone, and they're just too late to, to even get the boss. Looks like Axon's going in very forcefully with, his, with her Zeds, leaving her with no escape, but... Looks like nothing, nothing is uh, gained for either side except a little bit of damage. Now... I like your smell has to deal with the boss. They're gonna be later to level 10, and this is a free tribute for two plus two equals team. In fact, yeah, uh, Hammer just stays top. Someone should probably just go soak bottom, and they should maximize their advantage. And look at this, Illidan's already going for the siege camp once again. I really like how uh, two plus two equals team is using all their resources. Like, it seems like every minute and every second they realize what they should be doing, where everyone should be going. Like Muradin soaking bottom, someone soaking mid, the boss is doing its own work at the top so they don't need to be there because if you tried to be with the top uh, soaking some EXP there, you'd be pushed way too far up and you could be ganked. And then Illidan of course taking the mercs. So there are two people just pushing the fort here, which is kind of dangerous. Uh, I wonder if Tracer will be kill will be uh, punished. It looks like Li Ming was actually brought down somewhere, uh, probably mid combination of Illidan, who it looks like he used his metamorphosis and uh, Rhaegar caught her. Now, like I said, one of the reasons to pick Illidan into Li Ming is because he can stick on her, unlike uh, most melee carries, uh, melee heroes. So, with a level advantage. And, but Li Ming is up for this fight, so I wonder if I Like Your Smile will fight for this. I guess they will because this is uh, Curse Point, so they kind of have to fight for this unless they want to give it up early. Oh, look at all that damage from Sonya's ults there. And, oh wow, they actually took um, the missile, the big force, blunt force gun from Hammer. A nice four-man! or five-man even, 
Reign of Vengeance from Vala there, but it looks like 2 plus 2 is soundly losing this fight. It looks like Rhaegar is going to go- Oh, he actually gets Li Ming before he goes down! What value play by him. Uh, but it looks like I Like Your Smile does end up getting the, their second tribute, so next tribute is going to be cursed for either team. It's going to be a big fight, and they caught up a bit in experience after that, so they definitely came out ahead, but nice kill from Rhaegar to get that Li Ming at the end there. He knew he was dead, so he just had to go in and put as much damage in as possible, and that Wolf Lunge plus uh, Lightning Shield just completely dism uh, dismantled her. And you can see that he's actually going a full Wolf build. I've never actually seen a full Wolf build, so he probably taking the extra damage at 16 as well. Very aggressive build coming out from the Rhaegar. I like it. The Blunt Force gun is unusual. Like I said, with the other, with the Lava Strike, he could delay a tribute forever by himself. So, very curious there. Uh, of course, if if they land a Reign of Vengeance into a Blunt Force gun, then then it's a lot of damage. So, so you see Hyper Cooling Engines at seven for uh, Hammer as well, and Hunter's Onslaught, Friend or Foe, Immolation. Nothing nothing strange from the Illidan so far. And like I said, G is a very experienced Illidan player, very smart Illidan player. So. And it looks like Tychus did take the drill, foregoing the the Odin, even though it was buffed. Okay, so, oh my goodness, it looks like they caught two in this in this narrow choke here. Like I said, lots of choke around the tribute chokes around the tributes, and Vala and Muradin just got caught the wrong way. Of course, Muradin had the jump to disengage. Vala is too squishy for that and just got blown up. So they are down two people during curse. This is ex this is really what you don't want to do. Uh, ideally, you want to get two forts. Two, uh, if you're really lucky, you get three off your first curse. But uh, now they're not going to get expected value off your, off their first curse. Plus, they're losing all this XP because they're being zoned back. All this XP up here that they're losing, they can't soak that. So just oh man. This is bad. It looks like they're not going to get any forts. Oh wait, they might get the mid one. Okay, they're probably going to get the mid one. Oh, Sonya gets caught here! Oh no, just giving that advantage right back. So we're back to about a level advantage for 2 plus 2 equals team. Okay, so... But that was still not too bad. They only lost one fort and... Oh, okay, I guess the bottom wall. That's that's kind of bad. That's kind of a lot of damage. Um, from that first curse, but still definitely not unrecoverable by any means. Now you see 2 plus 2 equals team is doing their boss, and look, Muradin is immediately scouting the opposing boss. Of course, this is what you want to do. If your opponents disappear off this map and you suspect they're doing boss, you need to start your own boss right away, because otherwise, the team that takes the boss and you didn't take a boss, that means they can go take your boss while, you know, you're defending. So. To prevent that scenario, you have to take your own boss as fast as possible. And it looks like Muradin is just solo zoning. It, it seems like they just don't know where the enemy team is, and now they know they're coming, so they can't. They don't even want to fight this. I mean, they're they're on the same experience level, so I'm kind of curious as to why they just didn't want to fight at all. They had the other team coming into a choke, so they definitely could have tried to defend that boss at least, uh, re-engaged after backing off a little bit. But man, such aggressive plays coming up from 2 plus 2, they're feeling so confident. Now let's take a look at some of the level 13 talents. We got Giant Killer, we got Earth Shield for Illidan, once again, you just want to keep him alive as long as possible and prevent him from being bursted before he can dodge with his metamorphosis, with his just full kit. Healing Static, standard for Meriden, and six cents for uh, for Illidan. Of course, there's a range of magic and auto attack damage from the other team, so he just goes for the resistant. So good choices all around. And then on the other side, we have Subdue. Slowing Illidan down is really helpful. That punish actually slows so much. When I play Johanna, I try to take that uh, punish, actually. Uh, a lot of people like to take Burning Rage 
for the extra damage, but Punish is actually so good. You slow them so much, they basically don't move at all. You see, that's the stuff for Tychus to get a little bit more sustain. Um, blinding Flash to blind Illidan, another blind. So now they have two blinds for Illidan, and Illidan's going to have a tough time as long as they stagger those blinds. Um, and they don't stack them, and then he just metamorphoses it off. That would be not, not the best. And then Illusionist from Li Ming to get that extra blink. Once again, maybe trying to escape from Illidan. And a Mystical Spear from Sonya to try and get into the fight. So actually, we're on to level 16 talents. We actually see Reservoir of Hope, the, t the quest talent taken for Oriel, Mirror Ball standard, Nerves of Steel standard, Titan Grenade standard, and Imposing Presence by Son uh, by uh, Johanna. Once again, kind of more anti-Illidan stuff. They're just they're tired of this Illidan just jumping in and doing whatever he wants. Now they have a lot of talents to deal with them. And actually, we see Executioner for Hammer, which is a very good pick because you have the totem slow from Rhaegar which is constant as long as they stay around the totem and you have the frost shot from Vala and you have the thunderclap from Muradin as well as you know heavy impact and his storm build so and then marked for death which is the only level 16 talent for Illidan no, it's not actually the only one. I'm just saying, practically, it is the only one he has. So see that totem placement? That procs Executioner every time, as long as Hammer can hit them. But they just went for the tribute. They just got it. It's fine. They don't really need to fight here, and I agree with them. Next tribute is Curse Point again, and they have the, the level advantage. So they can actually... I mean, they're not going to get level 20 before the next curse, so they're not going to have a talent here advantage. But look at this. They got catapults pushing. They know that as long as they drag this game out, they have the, the pressure. Uh, I Like Your Smell has to go back and defend. So delaying the fights and stuff and dragging them out is in their favor. Look at all this damage that Sonya is taking. Oh, that is one weakness of Sonya, of course. She doesn't have an escape, really, once she goes in. She just kind of has to try and sustain through it. But with all this damage coming through, with Executioner, with Vala's hatred stacks uh, damage, she just has no chance. Look at how confident she is. Just even taking tower shots, going in past the wall knowing he can get out. It looks like they're trying to try and finish the game here. What a call. Uh, the shot calling from this team is just on point. They're, they know with three people down, with no blinds left on their team, how are they going to deal with this? It looks like Johanna has actually lost her connection. I wonder if uh, you want to pause. I actually didn't make myself a referee, unfortunately, so I can't pause. But... I'm pretty sure, and since she was the Johanna, she's not going to be back in time anyway. Illidan, of course, is one of the best core rushing heroes in the game, so it's very difficult to defend against him when he's just diving on your core all over the place. And you can see that they finished it easily. So that was well played from both sides, and it definitely could have gone either way from kind of the first 10 levels. But as Illidan got more and more powerful, we kind of saw that they kind of pulled away. So he, he was just reaching that point where he couldn't be killed faster and faster. And after Earth Shield was up on him, they were definitely not killing him. So, And like I said, I really liked all the the shot calls and the distribution of resources from 2 plus 2 equals team. Like it, it just seemed like there was never a wasted moment for them. Illidan was always going for the camps as soon as nothing was happening. They knew they they wanted to control the tempo of the game. They got the keep on the bottom with the boss. They got both bosses in that one phase. And I think really if I had to pick a turning point of the game, I would pick that one where they chose not to defend their own boss bottom. They backed away from it, which is fine. They 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 could have backed away from it, but then they chose not to re-engage while. Um, 2 plus 2 was doing their boss, so I think that was probably their best chance to fight, uh, and, and they didn't. So 2 plus 2 ended up getting both bosses, getting the keep there, which opened up the, the winning condition at the end. So, and you can see that they kind, of, they kind of won even without a curse, so. Well played by everyone. No one had a zero death game, so 
no shout outs to be to be had there but uh, i think everyone played really well i think uh, of course Aladdin did a lot of work and uh, I, I really like that Rhaegar build actually looking at those talents again just the full wolf build just I'm gonna bite your face off rrr. and uh, and then of course the the man the obligatory earth shield to keep Illidan alive and that's it and uh, ancestral healing so two talents to keep Illidan alive everything else wolf yeah okay <laughs> all right so that's it for this division one cast once again, you watch I Like Your Smile versus 2 plus 2 equals team, and congrats to 2 plus 2 equals team. Looking forward to casting them next week as well. And if you enjoyed the cast, please hit the follow button. The VODs will be up on my YouTube channel, which you can follow, find in the f information on my page down below. And have a good evening, everyone. Thanks for watching.